So welcome back to the shop, friends. Today, we're gonna to be making the famous Swedish breadboard. Sitting on the front porch on a Sunday afternoon, just me and a buddy who I've known for a few years. My goodness, fasten your seatbelts for an exciting video. We're gonna be making oh, a couple different variations right here. So this is the original sweet, the Swedish breadboard that we've used, and I don't really like it because of it's too thin and it's difficult to grab. I, I, when you get a little bit of butter on your fingers or slippery, I, it's, it's, it's hard to pick up. I tend not to like it. It's just too thin. So this is the first design that I came up with yesterday. And this is made out of five quarters, so it's much thicker. And you'll see that I put a bevel on it so that it bites the finger a little bit better, as well as having a hole. And that's really nice to be able to stick your finger into it or to hang it on any sort of a hanger, something like that, makes it just a little bit simpler. I've got another one right here that I made that I will uh, show you how I did the hole so we can kind of redupl or duplicate that. And you can still see you've got the bevels on there. It makes it a little bit easier to purchase and to grab. But the one that um, I've never done before, which is kind of the unique design, is what I've come up with right here. And that is a little bit bigger, seven by five, with this really elegant, beautiful little handle right here. That's the one that we're gonna work on first. So one quick word on stock, when making your butter knife, I'd probably recommend you use a hardwood just because it's much more durable, especially if you have kind of a delicate design like this. But when it comes to the, to the bread board, uh, you don't need to, anything fancy. You could just use uh, any sort of wood, anything that's pleasing to you. This is some CVG fur uh, from, the, from the homestead that I milled and planed down to five quarter. So it's almost just a little bit shy of uh, what well, say two inches or somewhere in there. But you don't need anything that elaborate. If you do want this stuff, uh, you can one cheap way to find it is stair treads. Uh, if you go to your big box store, they'll have some pre-cut stair treads that are bull nosed that are typically this thickness. And it just it's it's a it's a kind of an unusual size. You don't see it all the time. And that to me what makes it a little bit more special, just because it's unique. Now if you can't find that you can just go with your choice of something that's clear and a nice wood in a three quarter inch. So, so this here is just a standard CVG clear vertical grain. Man, is that not beautiful? Three quarter inch. And that makes a much nice, that makes a nice breadboard too. I think that these are just a little bit too thin. They're, as I said, they're hard to grab and they just don't look, look that nice. We can certainly do better. So that's what we'll be using today. We'll get started here with the CVG in three quarter thick. What a great project this is uh, for, for a first time. If you're just wanting to get into woodworking, you don't need table saws. You don't need any, anything fancy. The only thing you need to, to make this is maybe a cordless drill and, a, and a, a decent handsaw, $30, $28 handsaw, and, and a hand plane, a number four hand plane. And you can, I mean, you, even if you, if you don't mind putting a little work into it, you can just get like a like one of those $28, $30 Buck Brothers from Box Store and uh, put a little bit of work into it and have a plane that'll work just fine. No need to spend a lot of money on to, do, to make these nice little projects. So here's where we need to be a little bit more careful. So we've got our five by seven, right? And we've got this shape right here. This is two inches. This comes down to, to one inch. So you find your center and draw that and then connect those lines. So beings we can't, this is end grain. We want our grain to run this way. We can't plane this. We're, it's, we're not gonna be able to get to it. So we have to have very, very precise cuts, right? So we can do that with our saws, with our pole saws. So put your knife blade right on the, on the line there and bring the combo square to it. Make sure it doesn't move and very light pressure. You want a knife that's got a nice point on it an X-Acto knife or a marking knife like this. Light pressure. You hear the variation? That's as it's going through, it's severing those wood fibers. And about three times, and you're increasing with pressure. Let's do it four times, why not? Increasing pressure each time. This sharpening station that I, I built, uh, what was it? I don't know, maybe a year ago or so, I have just enjoyed this so much. I, I always sharpen my chisels or planer blades, uh, irons, uh, before I use them. 
I don't sharpen them when I put them away, but before I use them, I always sharpen them and having everything neat, nice and neat here is really helpful. And something that I did that saved a lot of time was uh, putting, gluing these little blocks at 25 and 30 degrees. That, there, that side there is for the planes, and over here you can see is for the chisel. I've had real good luck using these uh, chisel guide rollers. Uh, the, I've, I've done, showed these in videos in the past, but it's just a guide that helps, it helps me to uh, keep everything lined up. And it's got a wide clamp on the top there for the irons, and then you could put your chisels on the inside. So when I slide that in here, and it's got some teeth in there that bite. And so how this works, I, you know, I can freehand it, but I, you know, sometimes I just have better luck doing it this way. So if I'm gonna f do my chisel at 30 degrees, I've preset these little wooden blocks. So I could just go up to the edge of the drawer there and I can slide that in until it touches. And then I can tighten this up. I tighten it up with a screwdriver, that's what it was. That way it won't slide. And that has, I've predetermined, that sets the depth for my, for my angle so that I get the exact same angle every time. That's really the hardest part of the whole thing. I've got the diamond stones, I've got coarse, medium, and super fine. And I just put a little bit of water on there. And I don't have any guesswork. So I'll just start at the coarse. And I can sharpen chisels in no time. It doesn't really take any more than that. I'll go back and forth a couple times and that guide helps me keep everything lined up and then I'll go over to the super fine. And a light touch at the end and it just rolls along that bear, that, that ball is a roller wheel on the bottom so it doesn't damage or load up the stone. That's it, right there. I have an absolutely, absolutely sharp chisel. This is my favorite part. Remember we cut that line right there and we're gonna take our chisel using a half inch chisel. And just till we come in contact with that knife wall. You can feel the chisel you'll know when to stop as soon as it hits that hard up against that wall. Look at that, that CVG fur is so nice to, so nice to work with. Now we, we're gonna have to cut this too. This is kinda gonna be tricky because this is it across the grain. I mean, it's, it's with the grain and crossing it at the same time. So I'm just gonna put a little a little cut right there so I have a clean line and then I can scrape that out of there. We're going to do the same thing on our end grain. We made the cut with our knife and then we'll just chisel right down to that. We'll push it back and forth. You should be able to get it. So you got a nice clean wall right there. Just give it a little tap. And uh, you remove some of that wood there so it gives so you have a little bit of room for your your saw. See how clean and nice that is? No tear out. This is where it's so important to have a, a good saw. See how that's laid right in the kerf? Right or right, right alongside that knife ball there. And now we'll really care we can carefully follow that knife wall. The saw is going to want to almost naturally uh, lay right in that portion that we cut. Now, if you do get a little tear out like I did right there from just not being careful with my saw, that's okay because we'll, we'll, that will sand and we'll, we'll put a little bevel on that. So wood's pretty forgiving. You know, if you make a little mistake and it doesn't go as planned, that's all right. You know, you can always, uh, you can always fix it or come up with something. Now we can cut the angles and we're just going to have to freehand this one. Just start gently, but cut close to the line because we don't have room really to plane that.
So there's our basic shape. I haven't made one this shape before, but I have to say that I, I do like it. I do prefer it. It's, it's really nice to grab. It gives you the whole breadboard to put whatever you want to on there uh, without having to you know, take up like this one here with the hole. It looks, that looks nice, uh, but it's definitely much smaller. Maybe this size would be better. This size, a five by seven, I think is a good size uh, with the hole or the little handle on it. Okay, so let's plane, uh, we have our barks here from right here from our original, what we cut outside of. Let's plane all this down and uh, let's put a little angle on it, a little detail. See how much nicer that looks if we stack these up here, that, that having that little chamfer on there versus just a flat edge, it's really easy to do. And we can just uh, do, knock that out real quick. It makes a, makes a nice, uh, nice finish. So I'm not gonna worry about you know, making marks or anything. We're just gonna do this uh, kind of eyeball it how, it, how it looks nice, what looks nice as far as that little bevel. Uh, anywhere between about five and five and 10 degrees. So you can see that that's our line there, there for, that we wanted to, our, we'll get our dimension down to. So first off, we'll, we'll plane down to that. So we're symmetrical with both sides. We're gonna plane that flat. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to start to turn. I'm going to, I'm going to turn the plane at a little bit of an angle and knock, knock that off. I'm watching as I, until I draw a point on here. Just like that. That's all it takes. See how nice having that little bevel on there that makes all the difference in the world. So we'll just make sure you, you bevel the same way. So just flip it over like that. We can do the other side. And I'll just show you here how quick and simple that is to do. We'll just turn your plane a little bit, just at a little angle like this, whatever pleases you. Just like that. Do a little bit more. more, a little bit steeper on the other side, I can tell. There's no wrong way here. Yeah, that looks better. That looks more like it. Now we flipped around. Now we're working on the end grain. This is a whole different kettle of fish here. So they actually, you know, there are different planers, different angles, uh, low angle and high angle. If you look at this one, this is kind of a, an end grain plane or among other things, but uh, you see how shallow that, that, that angle of that uh, iron is compared with the, this one here, how steep that is. These are usually don't work quite as well on end grain, um, where sometimes uh, certainly a, uh, a plane like this at that lower angle works better. One thing you have to be careful with end grain though is don't let your plane run over to the edge because you have these unsupported fibers. And as the blade comes through here, it will catch and it will tear them out. It'll just lay them right over and ruin your work. So when you are doing this, we'll, we'll stop our cutting about here and we'll, and then we'll come over and we'll come from the other side, but we'll protect these edges here. We can go into it. No problem, just not too far. Here you can see where I planed and it kind of goes off like that where I didn't come to the edge. Now, if you don't have, you know, don't have a bunch of fancy planes and stuff, let's, we'll try it with this one, with the, just a standard block plane and see what the difference is, if, if any. Now, when I'm coming back, I'm lifting, I'm lifting. I don't want to drag back there and lay those over, but uh, I, I have to say, it begins the, That actually works better. It's a, it's a little bit more coarse. I can definitely feel it. I wouldn't say better. It's, it, it works just fine, but they don't really match up. So what I'll do is I'll just, just because I have it, I'll just, uh, just make sure that those, so it looks the same. And then if you're set really shallow, you can take and just knock, knock those sharp edges off. Come from both sides. 
hold it at 45, and you just take your little curly cue off there, that's all. Just to leave those sharp edges, they can give you slivers. Now this part here, you know we often talk about how the, the details matter. Makes all the difference. Little things that sometimes you don't even really notice them that when you're looking at them, but something about it just makes it special, uh, is where we'll put a little chamfer on here. And we'll use our, I've already got started there, we'll use our plane. See how those come together right there? So we have multiple angles going on. So it's like kind of the shape of a traditional coffin, right? Right, just like that. And we'll get the same thing over here. We'll do one side and then we'll keep going until we match it. You see that right there? Let's see if I can focus on that better for you. Whatever looks good to you. Something just like, just like that. I mean, it's so small, but it's everything. Same thing over here. Just till they come together. Man, that looks nice. We're a little bit shallow right there. So we're on an end grain, so we wanna come in. If it's not perfect, it's, it's okay. It's okay, now one more. Oh yeah, that is nice right there. You can see that little detail there, just that, just changing things up, having multiple angles and facets to things, things that create shadows are, are everything in aesthetics and design. You know, contrasted with just a piece of, like this one here, that just a square. You know, see the, the difference in, in how subtle it is, and you may not even notice it when you first pick it up, but it's, it's uh, to the touch and to the to to the the holding of it and just the the way it reflects light. It just gives it uh, gives it so much more. It just makes it interesting. Now over on this side, we have a bit of a challenge because we, you know, we can't get our plane in there, right? So whenever you can, even if it's just a little bit, at least kind of get it started, started in, in an angle there so it matches up the other side. Then we can do this by hand. You know, and try to avoid, on this one, because we want those hard lines, try to avoid sandpaper. Sandpaper destroys the tool marks, and it rounds everything over, and it makes it look common, um, and not like it was a tooled. This is so important to have your chisels sharp. That's why I always sharpen them. But see, we've, we, we've duplicated that, um, but freehanding. So we come to that corner there and we can take a little bit more. Oh, the pleasure of working with a sharp chisel is hard to quantitate. You can't get this look with sandpaper. This is where working with a hardwood as much, <laughs> you get better results than with a softwood. So when you come to these corners, just keep your angle and roll it in there, cut, and then come from the other side. The camera's not in the way. I've got the electron microscope videoing this and it's so huge that it gets in the way. <laughs> there we go. That's all right, we kinda. Now we'll just take our plane and set very shallow. Clean off all of the pencil marks and oil from our hands. And what that gives it, what, when you have a, an iron and that's so sharp as this one, it, uh, it, it severs the blade, severs the, uh, look at that. It severs the, um, the, the, the wood there into these. That's actually a little bit thick, uh, but it makes a clean cut across there and it kind of sharpens and cleans up those edges, especially where you're free-handed right there, and gives it that a, a, a polish, a shine that you can't get from sandpaper that just gives it a dullness. And just hit that. I think it's shifting on me there. 
It's kind of, you have to be careful clamping with these softwoods like this because that, with that bevel on there is not much holding. You just need to make, you can just see here and here where the blade hasn't passed. It's like that. I think every breadboard should have a, a hole in it in the, in the end. It's, it's nice for hanging and to me it just, it finishes it off. So we'll, I'll say a half inch hole. Do we want half inch or should we go nine? That's seven, nine, is it maybe nine, six, nine sixteenths. I think nine, let's go nine sixteenths on this. And I just kind of guessed there. Now make sure when you're drilling, when you're drilling, doing nice work like this, you want to make sure you clamp it down onto another flat board. That way when the auger comes through, it won't tear. Oh, this wood is so fragile. Just the force of the drill bit is stressing the end. It might crack it. Should have probably drilled a pilot hole. Just so delicate CVG. Okay, I can feel him through to the other side. Oh, we got it, didn't crack. So I like the hole. I think it just gives it kind of an interesting element, but it, just a, a straight hole, it doesn't look good. Since we have, everything has that, you know, that micro bevel on it. So you want a very, very sharp knife and you want to cut a chamfer in here. This is challenging uh, because you're, you're going with the grain here. And as you come around, you're going, um, you're cutting across the grain. So it's important that from the 12 o'clock you come around to the middle and then at the six o'clock and you meet at the you meet at the three so here we have the two designs you know the interesting thing about it is that so this one also uh, when you're done with these you coat them with uh, it's your choice either mineral or a um, a vegetable oil. I put a vegetable oil on there um, and that a uh, couple coats of that will it, it'll just weather and, and especially red fur like that that just it just turns redder and redder it gets so pretty pretty when it ages. Um, these are both the same so you can kind of see before and after. You know I thought that uh, this was a more practical design right because it, it, it has a handle and all of that but to be honest with you that just the aesthetics of it I don't I'm not happy with the way it looks. I don't really like it. It's okay. It doesn't, it's not offensive to me, anything, but something about it is not right. I think that this is out of proportion. I think that this is too small, but I like the size of it, but I really like this one. This one is, uh, I, don't know, I, I just don't like that. That's just not going to make it into the kitchen. This one, is, uh, this one gives me the fizz. Why, why? I just don't know. Is it the, Dimensions of it is the the way the deep set hole. Uh, I, li I like that a lot. The I like the the bevels on it the angles um, This is nice. You know if I were to if I were to recommend to you which one to do is This one got a little bit small. I think the five quarter thickness. That's what it is I don't like the thickness of this. It, it looks ordinary to me. It looks it This is not in the right proportion and this this is too small and this is too thin that's, that's what it is. That's why I don't like that. This here on the other hand is correct. This looks, it's got some substantial size to it. It's thick. It's an unusual thickness that you're not used to seeing. It looks like a little mini butcher block and having that one hole in there is cool. Cool. So I was hoping to, so I, I was hoping to have this, uh, when I presented it, uh, when I make these for friends and family is I have a, um, this Swedish ribbon uh, that's the yellow and the blue uh, that goes around. So you can, it, the, I wish I had it for you to show. I, I, it was supposed to be here today and it didn't show up. It got delayed because of weather or something. Um, but you wrap that around there, that, that blue and yellow Swedish traditional ribbon and you can do, you know, finish it off and that holds the knife on there and it makes it a, a nice, it makes a really nice uh, gift.
for someone. So if I were to give you recommendations, um, make the board out of five quarter, go get some tread stair, uh, some treads, just buy one tread from Home Depot, Lowe's, and you want that thickness, you want it to be that, that inch and a quarter. What, what does that come out to? I should probably tell you. Let's see, instead of just guessing, I was guessing it's five quarter, but actually it looks thin, it's not five quarter. What is it? It is, it's a full one inch. That's what it is, it's a full one inch. So one thing you could do is if you did found, find some, uh, a nice looking piece of framing material that was tight, not like this, it's kind of rare, but every once in a while you see them like a regular two by six, you could plane that down, just plane a, a half inch off of it and there you have it. So just what you want is that one inch is the right proportion. So do one inch by five by seven. So this size, that thickness and the hole in there, what size was that hole? Man, I should, everyone's gonna ask, gonna say that hole is perfect at three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch with a deep bevel. That bevel goes way down in there. I wanted them to actually almost touch and then round over inside there, but that's, that's the way it turned out. But I, that, that right there is, that's where it's at. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.